Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and review and a first impressions of the Perry Miniatures, the English Army. Uh, it's also from Agincourt to Orleans. So, uh, 1415 to 1429. You can use these figures in any of the Hundred Years' War armies technically they're just long bowmen and foot knights and men at arms uh any army that has long bowmen you should be able to use that okay now, and then you don't necessarily have to paint them up in this way but let's see what it says on the back this front picture is pretty good good with the spikes and stuff okay 100 years war english army the height of the 100 years war when the english bowmen dominated the field Specifically, the figures over the period from the Battle of Agincourt, when they were led by Henry V, to the Siege of Orleans, uh, when the French were led by Joan of Arc, which becomes the turning point of the war. All the men at arms are represented in the full plate harness, which is now the norm for gentry. The archers are represented uh, knocking, drawing, and loosing their powerful bows. So there's multiple different poses you can use for the English archers. All right, and now there's 36 models in here. That's quite a bit of models. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get. There's a ton of stuff packed into this small little box. Let me go ahead and put this box off to, off to the side. Uh, the first thing I want to say is it comes with the Perry Sprue. Uh, now this Perry Sprue is different than previous box. This is what some of the other Perry Sprues look like, Renedra Sprues. Um, the size of the foot soldiers are the same. It'd be 20 millimeters deep by about 45 millimeters wide. They give you about 15 millimeters per soldier. So there's 45 millimeters wide. So you would put three troops on one of these bases. Uh, but you can see that the these troops, normally that's two deep by three wide for a total of six figures. These are much larger bases. They're about 45 by about three bases deep. So that's 60 millimeters by 45. So I'm not sure what these are supposed to be used for. I'm kind of assuming it's for uh, cavalry, but we'll have to find out. They, these are not the same type of bases. All right, let's take a look at the, let's put the figures off to the side. But first of all, I want to take this manual, kind of stash it. And then I do want to point out that there's only a couple of bases, or I should say a couple of sprues of men-at-arms. They have six in each sprue for a total of 12 men-at-arms. And you know there's 36. All the others are archers. There's four sprues of archers, six apiece for a total of 24. So these 24 and these 12 get you your 36. Okay, and you got six here, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six archer sprues, but you don't have to do them all as archers, plus you have stakes. You can, uh, like this guy's a bugler, right? And there are guys with arms and hands that my understanding is you can make them standard bearers as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and zoom in and take a close look at these in just a second. But first, I want to show you this cool little pamphlet that Perry has given to you. Okay, talks about the English army and their orle, which is their little wreath thing there. That's a cloth, and it's ornamental, and it's filled with horsehair. That actually provides an additional padded padding to the helmet so when someone strikes it with like a bludgeoning weapon or something, that will actually absorb some of the blow. But mostly it's because it just identifies who is who. Uh, then you got these besigues, which are kind of like just little dangly shields that protect your armpits when you raise your hand. And then they've got these shields right there. 
They talk about the jupon, which is their coat. Okay. And then over here, see, this guy's made into some kind of standard bear. But you got, like, uh, archers with mallets. I guess they would be the ones driving the stakes into the ground. And then you've got your various different archers. And it goes into all the different kinds of colors and what you should use and things like that. Okay, but what's really cool is this. I was super excited about this. Because you've got standards, which that's cool for standard bearers. You got the St. George, St. Uh, Sir John Ru Ross, I guess Roos, uh, Hungerford, you know, and uh, Michael Delapole, Duke of Suffolk, and Henry V. And then over here, these are all banners. And the banners, I would assume, would go on the spears uh, similarly to standard. So it's going to have to work that out. But we've got like Henry V, John Plantagenet, uh, Thomas Plantagenet, which are heirs. And then uh, Sir Walter. And you'll notice that Sir Walter Hung Hungerford has this black and white heraldry. But when you look at his banner, it's different. So not always did the banners match the, the uh, standards. And then you got Banner of St. George. Yeah, these are Henry V's Treasurer of War. Yeah. So they got a ton of different banners on there. I thought that was extremely cool. A nice touch. Uh, these guys should be fairly easy to paint. Uh, most, of the, most of the archers are just wearing, you know, medieval clothes. Okay, so let's zoom in on the figures. Let me adjust the focus so I can bring these guys in close. And... We'll take a good look at them. Okay, so these are the men at arms. Let's take a close look at these guys. You got some serious detail, the, the aventail, chain aventail, the full plate with aventail. That guy's gonna be easy to paint. I'm just gonna paint him metal. And then like this guy, same thing. He's got a nice belt and the or, the laurels or oral lays. Am I too close? Yeah. And then you can see he's got an aventail, but it's covered by cloth on both of those guys. And then, whoa. And then he's got, like a lot of them have their daggers, their, their armor-piercing daggers. I can't remember what they call them, but they're basically just a spike with a handle. Uh, and then you can see their bassinet visors up here. You got their pig face, the wolf face, the dog face. And those are all uh, separate pieces that you glue to the helmet because now you have the option to glue them either up or down. So you can show their face or you can have it down like they're, they're fighting with it. And then the weapons, you got your swords inside sheaths. So you just glue, their to their, glue them to their hips. Super easy. And then you got these guys carrying the poles, the shield. And remember, the shield faces curves outwards like towards the enemy so remember face towards the enemy and then because the backside is where the strap is right okay and then you got this double-handed axe super coolio this is a long axe and this is like a lucerne hammer it looks like and then you got like a little hand a small hammer sword some open fists, some hand openings, maybe giving commands. Pretty cool. Okay, so two of those sprues are just like that for 12 figures. And then you got four sprues like this for the archers. Let's take a closer look at the archers. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting them next to the camera because of the way the archers are positioned on the camera. So it might just have to go upside down so you can get a good view of these figures. Okay, these are their fronts. Look at the stitching on their little gambesons. And then their heads are all separate. Look at the stitch. Looking good. Those models have a lot of detail on them. I'm going to have to use a lot of washes or something to really bring out those details. Okay, and then the back sides of those models. Do not disappoint. Do not disappoint. Yep, those are English archers. Okay. 
with their good old heads. Okay, and then you're looking at the bows. Basically, they're just arms with bows, but like this guy's got a mallet. I don't know if I'm going to do any mallet, guys. Uh, then you got these extra arrows. You can put them on your troops, or you could put them in their hands. There's like a little hatchet. That's cool. Uh, for, for chopping the wood to make the stakes, these right here, this, this thing right here is a buckler. That would glue at the end of a fist. See if we can find a fist. Those are all archer hands. He's got a bow. He's got an arrow in his hand. He's pulling back. I don't see any fists. See a hand with two fingers. There's a fist. A buckler could easily go at the end of this fist. So if you wanted to have a guy with an axe and a fist, that uh, a buckler, that'd be cool. Or a sword and a buckler, which. I guess you don't if you don't want to have that many archers you can make a couple of them you know actually hand-to-hand -hand fighting or something yeah that's pretty cool um, I'm digging it and then you get all these stakes as well all right guys thanks for coming out and checking out this video and uh, got a couple more to do and I'll see you in the next one